do you have any advice for building collaborations and networking as a PhD student? Um, so uh, I have a couple of advice. One mm -hmm. advice is uh, try to find ways of going for lunch with people. Not you, you don't have to go all every day to lunch with the professors and so on. But you can find if you can find a way that sometimes you go along with the, the faculty and the postdocs and so on. It's very good. It gives you really a perspective on uh, other fields. You don't want to be too isolated, just discussing with your advisor and nothing more. So I think I was fortunate when I did my PhD in Paris that uh, we had no canteen or anything. So everyone would get sandwiches. So it was very democratic in that sense. We would just go out, get a sandwich and go sit in the garden and eat the sandwich there. And it was all the students, postdocs, in fact, they were very good. It was very, uh, and it was very useful for me to to get a picture, a better picture of the field. So that's one thing I would suggest. So of course, if you are in a place where uh, people typically go to different places and so on, try to find a way that sometimes you you can uh, go for lunch with these people, and even if you just listen, it's very useful. Uh, the second thing I would say uh, is that I found that perhaps the most valuable thing for me for my PhD was meeting uh, my colleague at the time, Kolya Gromov. Having a collaborator that you work well with that is your age and that is a friend is really something amazing. It's a superpower. Right? I really feel like uh, it's not happening, but uh, if tomorrow I'm stuck and I have no idea or I'm desperate or I'm bored to death and I need something. I just call Collie and say, can I visit you in London? And maybe we could work on something new for... Uh... And this is really such an amazing thing. So, and uh, so try, you will not find, not everyone will be perfect match for you. But I feel like if you can find another student that you like working with and that can be a friend, that is super valuable. It's really an impressive, uh, really a blessing to be able to have a, a friend that uh, maybe you will work with, maybe not. I haven't worked with Colin in the past many years, but, um, but um, I will for sure work with him again eventually. And uh, that's very, very important. Uh, I had three pieces of advice when you asked the question. So you asked what would be advices for a beginning PhD student or for a PhD student in general? Ah, for collaborations, for establishing collaborations, right. And uh, the last thing I would say is uh, go talk to speakers at the end of the talks. Students are not going to ask questions during talks. I mean, they don't. It's just a fact of life. Go talk to speakers at the end of talks. You have questions, you think the questions are silly and therefore you don't want to ask them during the talk, that's fine. Of course, the, the optimal advice is ask questions also during talks, but that I know people don't do. So, uh, so don't, don't worry. But after the talk, go talk to the speaker. Go ask, oh, I saw this, I work on this. Do you think there's any relation between the two? Or you mentioned that it would be interesting to do this, but do you think it's really realistic? Uh, do you think I could look into that? Because those informal conversations at the end of the talks, maybe they will tell you, yeah, I said this would be interesting, but that's actually probably too complicated. A better problem is this that I would be interested in. I actually don't have too much time. If you want to work on it, we could try to discuss. Do you think it's something that is you have the tools to solve and so on? And many collaborations can start from there and many informal discussions. It's also the time when people will uh, give you a much more candid view on what is doable and what is uh, not. Mm -hmm. Because during Absolutely. talks, we always say it would be interesting to do X and Y and Z, but uh, we don't grade uh, the X, Y, and Z. We don't say Z can be done in 100 years, Y could be done tomorrow after lunch. And But there is such grading. We know very well which problems are immediate, which problems are uh, not yet well posed. And it's something that uh, they are more motivational than concrete problems. and. Uh, so going to talk to the person after the talk in an informal way, don't be shy about that and really force yourself to go talk to the speakers after the talk. Say, I go to this talk and I will go talk to the speaker after the talk, even if it is just to 
ask a clarification question, but really force yourself to do that. And I think good things will happen because you will do it like 10, 20, 30 times. And out of these 30, one or two will be very good. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And the YouTube algorithm thinks that you will also like this video.